But anyway, I'm John Brescio, and I'm, uh, I run Lombardi. Jerry is uh, my partner, and his grandfather started Lombardi's in 1905. He actually was in the store in 1897, and he had just a grocery store, then he put in a pizza oven and started making tomato pies. This whole neighborhood was all Italian. Yeah, and he would he was actually had a good heart and he put a lot of people to work when they came from Italy and he would take trips to Italy and bring back clothes and give donations of money to people that were still in Italy. But Lombardi became a staple for little Italy as far as all the Italian people would meet there, discuss the day the day. day and a lot of them would stop there and get a pie to take to work with them. He would wrap it in brown paper and string. And most of the factories were in Soho. And the Italian people lived here, and they would bring the pie with them and warm it up on a pot belly stove that would keep the factory warm. So they would have a hot lunch of pizza. Then when the war came, GIs came back to America and they had a taste of pizza, real pizza. And they started coming to Lombardi's where they could get a real pizza. And that's how the name started really growing. And then when they came out with the uh, dough mixer, pizza took off throughout the whole country. It was easier now to... Uh, make the dough instead of, because Janera used to make everything by hand. I've done it, it's a lot of work. Okay, so that's how pizza really took off through America. And uh, the rest is history of it. Gennaro made a good pie, had a coal oven, and used nothing but quality, and that's what we do here. And being the first pizzeria, Everybody looks for the hair and the egg. When I say that, they look for something wrong. So every day, everything's got to be A1, the way it was 100 years ago. And that's what we strive to do. So in a nutshell, we strive to keep it the way Gennaro started. And so how long have you been involved with the place? Going on 19 years. And I, my wife, started here with me as a waitress. She passed away a year and a half ago. But uh, when we first opened, it was just this hallway and the oven. And we expanded every couple of years from there. But when we first opened, that's all it was. She was the waitress and I did everything from washing dishes to delivering pizzas. And, uh, my job now is to make sure everything stays the way it was. We're all so good. So, I guess I'm doing a pretty good job. Huh? My first time in, I think you're doing a great job. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add? Just that uh, we're going to keep it going for a long time. You okay. own the building, right? I don't own the building, but I have a good lease and uh, okay. we'll keep going. And if I if I had to leave, we would get another one just as nice. So okay, fair enough. The name will always keep going. Yeah. Anything else? That's it. Just enjoy the pizza. Oh, I am. Thank you. Hello, my name is John Lombardi. I am the grandson of Gennaro Lombardi who has the first licensed pizzeria in the United States since uh, 1905 in New York City. Historic Little Italy, a little bit about the uh, pizzeria. My grandfather, Gennaro, and his pizza maker, Totono, who has his own pizzeria now in uh, Brooklyn, Spawn Island, came on the same ocean liner. They settled here in New York City's historic Little Italy. They worked in a little grocery store up the street, 53 Spring Street, where we're broadcasting right now from is 32 Spring Street. 
the uh, second location from the bodies. They started making small little individual pieces for the workers, who most of them worked in different shops, and they would sell a slice of pizza according to whatever you could afford. A penny, two cents, there was no price, but my grandfather wanted to help other Italians, which most of the older generation did. They took care of each other, they watched the neighborhood and so on and so forth. Um, as the pizzas started getting more and more popular with the workers, someone said, General, you should concentrate on making pieces as a living as, as opposed to having a grocery store and just making the pieces for the workers. The workers would take a little pizza and um, most of them worked in factories uh, that had um, these huge radiators at the time. Obviously there was no microwaves or, or any kind of ovens to, hook, to heat up your, your lunch. So they would put the little pizzas in a little, little box tied up with string on the air paper and everything. That was the thing. So my grandfather, taking the advice uh, from uh, some of the workers, uh, decided that he was going to make a full-fledged pizzeria. Uh, the pizzeria started 1897, but in New York City, the city of New York declared that you needed a license to operate a pizzeria. My grandfather, Gennaro, was the first one to get down to City Hall and obviously became the first licensed pizza in the United States. Now, Lombardi's Pizza is a traditional pizza made from specifics all the way from Naples because Naples where pizza originated from the Queen Margarita, which is the basic red, white, and green pizza for, that was made for the uh, royalty of, uh, of Italy and has the tri-colors in it. It has the red the tomato sauce, has the mozzarella for the white and the green for the basil. The criteria from Naples to call yourself a Mar pizza margarita now is that you need to have either wood burning or coal burning oven, the diameter of the pizza, the ingredients, which is San Marzano tomatoes, fresh buffalo mozzarella, right? and of course the flour and even the temperature of a coal oven has to be decided to make a modern pizza margarita. <laughs> the pizzeria has been well established since 1905. We've been in countless television productions, the History Channel, Discovery Channel, the Food Network, Travel so, so on and so on and so forth. And as and obviously many celebrities have come here and it's a big tourist destination when people come to New York City, the first thing they want is we want New York pizza. So this one being a historic value is coming here. Uh, just a little bit in my, my childhood, I remember going to the second, I'm sorry, the first location, which was Corsa Street as a child and watching how my Uncle John, who I'm named after, would make pizza. He would actually take the time when he made the pizza, I mean, sometimes you see pizzerias where they fling it in the air. Really, not supposed to eruptions the pizza, but you know that was kind of a ship with the with people. He would take the pizza, and when he would, when he would, after he would pour the, the tomato sauce or gravy, whichever you like to call it, on the pizza, he would take the time to actually, actually place little pieces of mozzarella on the on the pizza, taking his time like a deck of cards to deal it like this and make sure that every every part of the pizza had looks up had the, the right mix it up. If you wanted a topping of pepperoni or if you wanted meatballs, he would take a little toothpick and he would put a pinhole in the sausage or the pepperoni so the olive oil would actually drip into the pizza and give it more flavor. <laughs> so if you were in a rush to get your pizza, obviously my uncle was gonna say good food takes takes time and that's it. He took he took the time to, to like, place the mozzarella, to put the little pinholes into the pizza, then he put it into the oven at the right temperature, which 
Um, not sure of the degrees, but I know once a, a coal burning piece is up to full running, you can run a locomotive off it. It is, it is that, it is that hot. <laughs> once a coal burning oven, and a, this oven here could probably make a full fledged piece in four minutes because of the temperature. Um, the, once again, if you, if you visit New York City, you should come to Lombardi's Pizzeria. They are the five slices pizzeria. The ingredients are in standards to the criteria for Naples for the, for the margarita. And uh, it's delicious. The, it's delicious pie. It's probably something that you're not, might, might not be used to. You might be used to going to a regular pizzeria, and you'll see that there's a difference between a gas oven pizza or a wood burning or coal oven pizza and the ingredients. A lot of times you go get a slice of pizza and it's too doughy, it's too thick, you pick up the slice and it droops. Olive, olive oil dripping down you think, and the, you and the crust the, just droops. <laughs> it just droops, which right? is it's disgusting. Fags, the mozzarella is, in, is, is processed block cheese. It just falls off and stuff. Yeah. Um, so getting back to earlier part of uh, Lombardi, as, as I mentioned, Totono, who was um, one of my grandfather's um, pizza makers. Uh, he stayed with my grandfather from 1897 to, I believe, 1924 or 25. Uh, at the time, uh, the New York City sub subway system was extended out to Brooklyn, the furthest part of Brooklyn called Coney Island, which was a big, and it still is, a big tourist destination, a big amusement park. So Totono had the insight to say that he was going to take his skills and go to Coney Island and open a pizzeria. So now in the New York City, New York City uh, area, you see a lot of um, pizzerias that still have the coal burning ovens who were at one time associated with my grandfather or learned from my grandfather. Like who? Well, we have Totono's from Brooklyn. We have Patsy's up on uh, East Harlem. Uh, we have John's on Bleecker Street. And there's the Moldy's in Brooklyn. Uh, I don't think I I don't think I forgot anybody. I think we got them all in there. And um, outside the restaurant, if you look at the window there, there's a uh, family tree, and you'll see you'll see the, the tree, and you'll see the branches and the roots and so on and so forth. And you'll see Lombardi's there, 1905, and then you just start seeing watching the branches, little by little, how how other pizzerias uh, got their traditional learning from uh, Lombardi's. When did the move occur from across the street over to here? Um, well, what happened was in 1934, uh, Lombardi's decided to upscale. They became a restaurant and a pizzeria. And in the back of the restaurant, they had what they called the mermaid room. And what it was, was there was uh, these lighted photographs of images of mermaids on the walls. And uh, they decided that, from, that they wanted to develop with the changing times here in New York when we started, people started coming here and they wanted not just pizza, pizza they wanted to uh, also have dinner. So in 1934, they opened the, the Mermaid Room, which was in the back of the pizzeria. And uh, even though pizza was still up, up and running, they decided to add a little more to the restaurant. And um, believe it or not, a delicacy in 1934 in the body was chicken cacciatore. <laughs> yes, I know, it was a, it was a delicacy. Hey, yeah. done right, it's a good thing, don't laugh. No, of course not. Uh, what happened was, that uh, over the years, um, probably from this, probably the 80s, I would say, when all the proverbial corporate greed, you know, in the uppies or whatever you want to spell, most of them had all, the, all had all this spending power and stuff. My cousin Jerry, who um, who, who is the the owner of the partners here with John Brescher, decided that he wanted to make an upscale restaurant uh, because people had the buying power, the spending power, and they put pizza secondary and concentrated on, on making a high-end restaurant. And what happened was, uh, unfortunately, 
the Wall Street bottomed out in the 80s and uh, people didn't have the spending power. And um, at that time, you know, the Lombardi's was still a full-pledged, up-and-running Italian restaurant, you know, as opposed, as opposed to just a pizzeria. So it shut down for a few years, and then in the early 90s, um, he was approached, my cousin was approached from a pizza maker, and they started got the conversation, and they were talking about pizza and all those and everything. So my uh, cousin got the nudge, all he needed was to say, okay, um, I'm going to upslot the bodies again after this little hiatus. He got in touch with his long-term family friend, John Brescia, who's his father now. And uh, this location here, the reincarnation of bodies at 32 Spring Street, uh, is now uh, 19 years old. When did they expand from this being the original side to that side? Well, they started on this side, um, as John John Russia said in the, uh, the interview earlier, that um, this was the room here at first. And then when he, he started doing well, he decided to expand. And there's another little, little room on the back over here. Okay. And then um, he decided to make next door, which was the King of Dale he started making a little cupcake store. The cupcake store didn't last too long. So he says, you know what, the pizza's, the pizza's doing well. I'm going to take that store out, put a bar in there, made more table space. So there are now three rooms here and a basement too that you can also sit in. And there's also a upstairs now. So there are five rooms in this restaurant, so it just shows you how Lombardi's expanded over 19 years. Hmm. Anything else? I think we pretty much got it, right? Oh, I think so. Unless you have some of the questions for me. No, I think we pretty much covered it. Cause... Yeah. 